In this tutorial, I'll show you how we can stack images that were taken not only with different telescopes, but with different cameras and exposure times. APP is a program that works really well when doing this difficult task. We'll have to fine tune the parameters to ensure that there are no seams or sky background variations, but this is fairly easy to do. For this, I'll call upon two telescope live data sets of the Rosette Nebula that were taken a few years apart. I shot the original wide field images using the Chile 4 ASA 20 inch reflector telescope with an FLI CCD camera. More recently, Telescope Live released a new data set taken with the Chile 1 24 inch plane wave telescope fitted with a QHY 600 CMOS camera. This shows a close-up of the interesting structure in the centre of the nebula. These data sets are available for download from the Telescope Live website after you have registered and chosen one of the monthly subscription plans. Now shown here in PixInsight are the two hydrogen alpha stacks side by side. As you can see there is quite a difference in scale. We'll use APP to place the left hand frame seamlessly within the wider view shown on the right. In APP I'll load a small selection of both hydrogen alpha data sets so we can test the procedure. Once happy with the fine tuning I'll load a bigger set which contains the colour data. Click on the load button and then the light button to locate the directory containing the sub exposures. I'll load four wide frame and four narrow frame subs. Once loaded the files will appear in the file list as usual along the bottom of the screen. As it happens the Chile 4 CCD exposures have a minor column defect and some hot pixels so we'll deal with those first. I'll click on the calibrate button and scroll down to the cosmetic correction section. Here I've used values of 2 and 4.8 for the hot pixel kappa and cold column kappa parameters respectively. We can check for success by clicking on the calibrated option at the top. Yes, that looks like it's worked a treat. Next, I'll click on Analyze Stars and we'll leave the settings on default. Click on the Analyze Stars button to start the procedure. Note that the file list is now populated with CA and star to show that both of the above procedures have been applied. Now we'll click on the register button. Most options here have been left on default but let's have a closer look. For the scale start and stop values I've chosen 4 and 10 respectively. Below that I've turned off the same camera and optics option for obvious reasons. The registration mode is left on normal as we're not creating a mosaic. Now click on start registration. As before, the file list is updated showing the successful registration of images. Next click on the normalize button. Here we change the mode option to advanced. I've left everything else on default so we'll click on the normalize lights button. Okay so far so good. The images have been normalized which should help to even out the sky background. Now we go into the integrate menu. At the top I'll use integrate all. I've turned off local normalization rejection and I've also disabled the local normalization correction by choosing no LNC. Just below that I've ticked the multi-band blending using a value of 29%. I think everything else is left on the default settings now. At the bottom we choose our save directory. Then click on the integrate button and choose a file name. We'll use ROSSTACKHA then click OK. APP will start the procedure so we can sit back for a few moments. 
When completed, the new merged image appears on the screen. I mean, look at that. It's done a great job with seamless blending and removal of the cosmetic artifacts. I usually brighten the image to check for artifacts. Yeah, this looks great. At this stage, I switch to the fits header information to ensure that the number of stacked frames is correct. Come down to where it says num frame in the list and we can see that eight frames have been stacked as expected. Back on the image, by zooming in, we can see that the number of diffraction spikes around the brighter stars has increased from four to eight, another sign that both data sets have been combined. This test has shown that our parameters are correct, so let's go ahead and combine some color data. The procedure is the same. Load and light buttons to open the sub exposures and we can let APP automate the procedure this time as we know that the fine tuning is correct. Click on integrate, but this time we'll select integrate per channel as we want APP to create three SHO master frames. Set the save directory as before and then click on integrate to choose a file name and then start the procedure. I'll use rows SHO, then click on OK. This will take a lot longer, so I'll jump ahead. Once completed, APP will load one of the three frames into the file viewer. We can check them individually to make sure everything's OK. I think these all look very good, so top marks to APP. To finish off, we can combine the three data sets into an SHO or Hubble palette image by clicking on Tools, then scroll down to Combine RGB. Select the SHO Hubble 2 option and click on Add Channel and then select the three frames. Check that each filter designator is correct. For some reason it shows custom here for the H alpha option, so I'll click on this to change it to hydrogen alpha. Click on OK to load the next frame. Once all are loaded, click on the recalculate button. APP will load the color file into the viewer. You can increase the saturation using the button on the right. To save the color image as a fit file, Click on save at top left. To save the file as a scaled TIFF image, click on the save button at top right. As you can see, APP has done a great job. When working with your own data, you'll most likely have to tweak a lot of the settings we've used here, but this tutorial has shown the procedures required and it certainly gets easier with practice. I hope this has been of use to you and uh, I'll see you in the next video.